Benford's law is Zipf's law for numbers. And uh, what it says is if you take a large collection of numbers, and um, these have to be natural numbers, uh, so, the, they, uh, so you can take things like uh, population numbers, uh, the, the number of people that live in cities in various places in the world. Uh, you can take physical constants, uh, you can take stock prices, you can take electricity bills, and a number of other domains. So if you take all of these numbers and you look at the first digit of each number and you plot the frequency of the first digit, what you will see is a really, really strange picture. So uh, 1 will be the most frequent value for the first digit of a number, and 2 will be less frequent, and 3 will be less frequent, and 4 will be less frequent, and so on and so forth. So uh, what you have in the figure on the right is the plot of the frequencies of the physical constants. So these are just the natural constants that, uh, that, that you have in, in physics. And this plot is on linear scale, it's not log, -log scale. And, um, and, and what you see is the frequencies do actually decrease. So 1 is most frequent, and 2 is less frequent, and 3 is even less frequent, and so on and so forth. And uh, it turns out that in many, many domains, you can fit this data with something called Benford's Law, and you have a formula right there. So the probability of a digit is proportional to the log uh, of 1 plus 1 over the value uh, of the digit. Obviously, you're not including 0 in this one. <coughs> so what does this uh, what does this mean? How does this come up? The first time you see this law, uh, the first time you hear of it, you think, well, this this is nonsense. This this, this cannot possibly be true. And yet it is true in many in many in many natural populations uh, of numbers. So why is this happening? How can we explain what's happening? And one possible explanation is the exponential growth of quantities. Benford's law holds true in the domains where you have exponential growth of quantities. So population numbers have exponential growth, right? So if you have a certain, uh, a, a large city will grow proportional to its size. Uh, stock prices uh, have exponential growth and decay properties. A stock price will increase in proportion to its current uh, price. So how is exponential growth connected to Benford's law? Why, uh, why does it make digit one more frequent than digit two? And the way you can think about this is, um, take one number in isolation, right? So suppose you have a city, and then assume that the population of the city is growing exponentially, and then look at the look at the look at the numeric value of the population as a function of time. So uh, that's what I have. Uh, that's what I have on the y. Um, uh, that's what I have uh, on the figure below. So uh, now the city starts off with a certain uh, with a certain number of people, and here I guess I'm. I'm using a bad example. So let's let's say that this is in thousands, right? You start with one thousand people, uh, and after a certain number, uh, after a certain number uh, amount of time, uh, you're going to have two thousand people and three thousand people and so on and so forth until you get to ten thousand people. Now, because the population is growing exponentially, it will take you a certain amount of time. Uh, for the population to double, to go from 1,000 to 2,000, uh, but it'll take less time to go from 2,000 to 3,000, and even less time to go from 3,000 to 4,000, right? Um, and uh, and that's, the, that's the property of uh, exponentially growing uh, quantities. So it will take you, uh, it, it, takes, it takes a constant amount of time for the population to double. So you have the same amount of time uh, that it takes uh, for the population to double from 1,000 to 2,000, uh, and exactly the same amount of time from 10,000 to 20,000, and from 100,000 to 200,000. Right. Uh, and likewise, uh, from 2,000 to 3,000, 20 to 30, 200 to 300, it'll all be the same number. And that number is going to be smaller than from 1 to 2. Right. Now, uh, so this is time. Now think about in your data set when you are observing these uh, quantities, 
what you're doing is you are measuring a population of the city at some random moment in time, right? You're not measuring it 100 years ago, you're not measuring it 100 years in the future, you're measuring it now, or whenever the data was uh, collected. Uh, and what that means is you're basically putting a random point on this timeline and reading off a value from there. Now, if you look at this timeline, you put a random point there, you are much more likely to get a number that starts with 1 than you get a number that starts with 2, right? So, uh, everything between 1,000 and 2,000 starts with 1. Everything between 10,000 and 20,000 starts with 2. Everything between 100,000 and 200,000 uh, starts, uh, starts with 1 again, sorry. All, all of those spans start with 1. <coughs> So uh, that's how you get a high frequency for digit 1. Now for digit 2, you get a lower frequency because a, a smaller slice of the timeline starts is devoted to numbers that start with 2. So that's 2,000 to 3,000, 20,000 to 30,000, 200,000 to 300,000, and so on and so forth. So what you will get is a frequency for 1 is very high, a frequency for 2 is lower, a frequency for 3 is even lower, and so on and so forth. And uh, it's a surprising law. It, holds for populations, but it also turns out to hold for lots and lots of other domains.